I'm a software engineer, and that means I'm obsessed with two things, automation and optimization. Spending 40 hours to automate a 10 second task, worth it. Spending another 40 hours to make it run three milliseconds faster, also worth it. Who needs sleep when you have efficiency? So when I realized I could optimize and automate part of my marriage, I mean, how could I not? This all started with an office gift exchange. My secret snowflake bought me a shirt folder and it was a game changer. My wife worked at Kmart during college and she gets grumpy if our shirts aren't folded in the way of the K. But now that I have this shirt folder, our marriage is saved. So the other day, this happened. Okay, so uh, what would you like to have for dinner? Nah. Uh, how about Olive Garden? Mm, Chipotle. Mm. McDonald's, not feeling it. Subway, Mexican food. Pizza Hut, Wendy's, Burger King. That gives me gas. That's when it hit me. I can solve this. I don't ever have to go through this again. I have the power of flutter and lasers. Our marriage is gonna be even more saved. Honey, I'm not just a husband anymore. I'm a solutions architect for our dinner dilemmas. And thus the idea for the decisionator was born. This is actually my second attempt. The first try was a couple years ago. I put together a soldering kit with LEDs that stopped in a random position. I came up with a whole concept and even 3D printed a case for it. I was never satisfied with it though and I eventually abandoned the project. I went back to the drawing board and came up with a new and improved plan. At the heart of this thing is a Raspberry Pi 4. Instead of installing a full operating system, I used Raspbian Lite. This gives you a command line and not much else. I paired this with an open source project called Flutter Pi. This is super cool because it lets you run Flutter apps without a full windowing system. This saves a lot of unnecessary memory and overhead. I also needed access to the Pi's GPIO. The, the Flutter GPIO package worked flawlessly for this. I was able to access the GPIO just as easily as using Python. I haven't tried the package on other platforms, but it looks like it'll work with more than just the Pi. Finally, this project relies on some simple animation and collision detection. I could have just written this in vanilla Flutter, but I decided to give the Flame Engine a try. I was pretty impressed with the results. It's nice to gain access to game engine stuff without having to give up your existing Flutter workflow. Once I got all this working, it was time to do some testing. All right, so I've got a Raspberry Pi here that is hooked up via breadboard to a couple of buttons and a DSi display. So when I press this button, it spins and chooses a restaurant so that the wife and I don't have to pick one out. The decisionator can pick it out for us. Looks like we're having Chipotle tonight. So far so good. Now all it needed was an enclosure and this is where things start to go downhill. This bad boy is held together with magnets, glue, and terrible planning. My high school shop teacher saw this, he probably revoked my diploma. The good news is I learned a lot and I think I can make the next project better. Feel free to call me an idiot in the comments though. This is my first long form video and I could use the engagement. The first thing I did was create a basic design in Fusion 360. I knew I was going to be laser cutting the enclosure instead of 3D printing it, so I designed accordingly. I wanted it to have a retro vibe, but also feel somewhat futuristic at the same time. Once the basic design was created, it was time to fire up the laser cutter. This took forever. I have a pretty basic entry level diode laser. I wish I had the budget for something faster, but this gets the job done. After several rounds of cutting, I had everything I needed for the frame. I glued the pieces together using these corner clamps and it was at this moment I realized my woodworking skills suck. I should have put some tabs in the design to keep the pieces straight. I didn't. So I'm just slathering on glue and hoping for the best of the clamps. The result isn't pretty, but it does work. A wise maker once told me to never make anything you can't take apart. I took that to heart with this project and decided the bottom and back would be held on with magnets. In hindsight, this was maybe a little too easy to take apart. For the most part, the magnets work, but every once in a while, the whole thing falls to pieces. The magnets were held on with even more glue. 
Five minute epoxy, to be exact. I have grown to love this stuff. It can permanently stick anything to anything, which is both good and bad. I wasn't very precise when gluing the magnets in place, and this would come back to bite me in the butt later. The bottom and back panels don't sit as flush as I'd like, and it's because I didn't take my time here. In tandem with this, I also worked on assembling the top section of the frame. I'm straight up just abusing these corner clamps at this point. There's got to be a better way of doing this. This is all looking really ugly, and the plan is to cover most of this mess up. I'm planning to use a process called sublimation to make the outside look cool. Before I wasted a lot of good materials, though, I printed some test pages to make sure the sublimated pieces would fit as I expected. I was really happy of how those test pieces came out, and that gave me the confidence to keep moving forward. At this point, I began sublimating the pieces for the outside. I'm new to sublimation, so that was a learning experience too. It turns out, when sublimating on wood, the amount of moisture inside makes a huge difference. In this shot, you can see the steam coming off as I remove the heat press. It's like a sauna for wood! That's bad though, and led to some weird light patches in the final product. I learned to pre-press the wood to get the moisture out before actually doing the sublimation, and that helped a lot. So I got the sublimation to a point that I was happy with, and then it was time to laser cut the cover pieces out. Unlike the frame, I actually care about how this looks, so I covered it with masking sheets to limit the amount of overburn, and this combined with good air assist has been pretty successful. You'll notice the registration marks on the board. This is to calibrate the laser using Lightburn's print and cut feature. It's a pain in the neck to get aligned, but the results are totally worth it. The last part of the frame that needs work is the main basil, and I attached it with hinges. And you know what? As jank as those hinges are, I have to say that they've actually been really useful. And honestly, that goes for this whole project. The ideas as a whole are good, I just want to make them better for my next project. The frame had some rough seams and was covered in glue, so I sanded all that down. Off camera, I spray painted the case black, which made it look dramatically better. Spray paint is truly the superhero of shoddy craftsmanship. Once I glued the sublimated pieces, I started to relax a bit. I mean, they really saved the project. This thing looks way cooler than it deserves to, and I'm really happy with how it came out. With the enclosure done, it was time to go back to the electronics. I'm using a 12 volt power supply. The LEDs actually do take 12 volts, but the Pi needs five. So I'm using a buck converter to step the voltage down for the Pi. I decided to power it via the GPIO pin so it didn't require an extra power brick inside the case, and I'm really glad I did that. I'm also using the GPIO to detect input from the two buttons. In keeping with the theme of making this easy to work on, I decided to connect the ribbon cable to a breakout board via the GPIO, and that's going to make it easier to reuse the Pi for something else in the future. And now it's time for things to go downhill again. Introducing the second MVP of this project, my no-name Amazon rotary tool. This thing gets more action than my soldering iron at this point. It's basically a get-out-of-jail-free card for my poor planning. The ribbon wouldn't fit inside the case that I bought for the Raspberry Pi, so I did some rotary tool persuasion on the connector. I know this is dumb. At this point, I was so desperate, and I just didn't want to buy a hundred different cables to figure out which one fit, so rotary tool! A buddy of mine likes to say, if it's stupid and it works, it's still stupid, you just got lucky. And I'm going to say, I got lucky multiple times on this project. I mounted the Pi directly to the back of the screen and then ran the ribbon cable to a breakout board. From there, it was just a matter of finishing up the wiring and huzzah, it works. I now have an innovative solution to make any decision. Just tap a button and a machine will make dinner decisions for us. What a time to be alive! It's not just that though, it has three additional modes, chores, date night, and streaming services. Each one is accessible with just a tap of the mode button. It's like having a Swiss Army knife for indecision. So there you have it, y'all. My marriage is saved thanks to Flutter, a laser, and a gallon of five-minute epoxy.